Who wants to be with Dobson with the Sprite here and welcome to Game Gems, the show where we talk about games that should be gems and they should be in your collection. Last episode we went ahead and did the PlayStation 2. Now you may be thinking, it should be PlayStation 3 then, shouldn't it? Unfortunately we're not going to save the PlayStation 3 for the next season because there's a fuckload. And I'm not lying, lying people, there's a fuckload. I have actually have the whole collection of the PlayStation 3, so it's going to be tough for me to decide on what would be my first five gems. So I have to take my time and choose wisely on what I want to, pl want to show you. But today, we're going to do the PlayStation 4. Oh yes, it's about time we do something like the PlayStation 4, people. Now, as you guys know, in 2025, it will be the finale of the PlayStation 4 releasing physical games. That means for the people who are massive collectors like myself, will have to get off their fat asses or skinny asses, depends on your weight and it depends how big you are, and if you're a man or a woman, all right, and go down to the shops and pick up the games that are extremely cheap because they will be selling them off like fucking crazy when they get themselves prepared for more PS5 games on their own or, sadly, the PlayStation 6. But I digress. I do not want to know anything about the, P the PlayStation 6. It's not going to happen for a very long time. But it's not 2025 yet. It's 2023. So we've still got two years left. So we can still talk more about the PlayStation 4. Now, the PlayStation 4, it was uh, had, a, it had a rough start, to be honest, when it got released. Uh, a few games were quite all right. Some of them were very, very poor. Of course, it lost massively to the Xbox right from the very get-go from its release date but as it progressed it got better it got stronger it freaking demolished a lot a lot of competition now I'm not talking about the game wars because I don't believe in the game wars I don't believe in what is better I cannot I'm not bothered whether PlayStation is better or Nintendo's better or Xbox is better I don't give two shits as long as the games are fun that should be the main reason for being a gamer. You got to love the games, not the fucking console. If you're a freaking person that loves a console that daily or loves PC, you're in the wrong profession, people. You got to love the games before the console. Get my get your jet, get your um, facts right, people. Love something that what it is, not for what it's on. But today's episode, we're doing places in four. I've got five choices right here that I have to definitely agree that they should go in my, in my uh, gems collection. Now there is going to be a lot more on PlayStation 4 people because I've got a bigger collection as well on PS4. And on the PlayStation 4 at the moment, out of the whole entire collection, I am only missing around about 80 games out of the PS4 collection that's getting released at this moment in time. When, the P when 2025 is over and done with in two years time, then I can actually calculate on which ones am I missing fully, and then I can start hunting fully to go after the full collection. But anyhow, I've got five here. Let's stop jibber-jabbering, and let's get this on the way. First game I've chosen is Berserk. Berserk and the Band of the Hawk. This game is based off the anime. Now, if you guys know, the anime is very freaking dark. And very dark, very gory. It's a proper gore fest. Now, this game was freaking a god saviour when this game got released because it was made by the same people who made Dynasty Warriors. And this game freaking works it. It is perfect for that type of game. A lot, a lot of hacker slashing, a lot of gore, a lot of action. Great story, great build. Oh, it's perfect. It's fantastic. Now, if you guys have never ever watched Berserk, and you go straight into this, I wouldn't recommend it. Watch the sh film slash shows before you play this game. Because this game will fully ruin the whole entire show. You've got to watch the show first before playing this. I recommend it massively. It is that good. Now, what can I say? Because like I said, I have to say something bad a little bit about the game and everything like that. Um, the fighting can be tedious. Don't get me wrong, because games like Danny Stories do get um, tedious as it goes along, because you're doing the same things over and over again. But at least, though, that in Danny Stories, it looks like the same areas with, with Berserk, 
they're very much in different areas, big time, big different areas. And I love it for that. They didn't. They went ahead and followed the anime to the T, which I wicked am happy they did. And that is why it's one of the best spin-off games that Dynasty Warriors have made. Berserk and the Band of the Hawk, fantastic. 10 out of 10. Definitely a gem in my eyes. Next up, it's quite an indie horror game-ish, but it's based off the film, Blair Witch. Now this game has got a lot of fans, but a lot of haters. I'm a fan. I played this live on my streams with Beth in my ear talking to me as I played this game and it was the most scariest game I had ever played and do you guys know how much I don't like paranormal activity shit and things in the woods in the dark? <gasps> don't get me started. Holy shit I scared myself so many times and if you don't believe me go ahead and look at my old live stream of Blair Witch. It was one episode I ever did Holy shit, it was scary. Jesus. I think I did like five hours on the live stream. And I don't think I'll ever do it ever again. It was that scary. And this game as well has numerous endings. So you can play this game more than once. Uh, sadly for me, I got the bad ending. Lo and behold, I got the bad ending, of course. But it's just really, really good. They followed the film correctly on how it should be done and I, as you guys know a lot of people don't like the Blair Witch films a lot of people don't like them I actually do in, don't mind me at all but the game I think is better the game's better than the film now a lot of people may disagree with me and say both are terrible and what am I, what am I putting this in the Jet collection but I really do like it it's very scary depends on what your horror is into but for my horror this is definitely scary massively and that is why Blair Witch is in the collection. Right in the gem collection. From another film to the next, but this next one did succeed massively. And it's one of my favourite ones I ever live streamed, and that is Alien Isolation. Ho, ho, ho. This game is fucking scary. Ho, ho, ho. Um, and I was speaking to Lou this morning, if you guys want to know, where uh, Lou is uh, the one I play um, The Remnant with and everything, and Call of Duty. He was the one that asked me to play this, and I was not sure if I should or not. And when I picked it up, and I got it quite cheap, I paid six quid for this game, it was dirty, dirty cheap. And when I actually got my hands on it and started playing it, oh my god, I was hooked right away from it. And it was very, very scary. And the one thing that I really loved about it is that the AI of the alien is so freaking clever. You can definitely manipulate the AI if you can, and somehow, somehow I did manipulate it, which was great, but sometimes it didn't work and I did fail and I did get killed by the alien. But if you played the game with a microphone and you made a single sound, the alien knew where you were, and that, I think, is freaking genius. A lot of horror games should listen and follow what this game did. Because if they don't, oh, they may get bit by the dust by other horror games. Now, as you guys know, in the future, Outlast is doing another game. If they put microphone functions like they did with Alien Isolation, I think it'd be a massive game changer and it'd be even more scarier. So, yeah, this game was ace. The AI was spot on. A very clever AI, if I would imagine. The DLC is amazing. It's freaking alien. What's not to love? It's great. Into the game collection for gems. Next up, this game is pretty much a gems for two player games. Now, of course you can play this game as one player, but I don't think it's not as fun. I played this with Beth on remote play. Uh, we played it together in this same games room. And then we also play it in two different houses. It takes two. And this is the only copy that ever got released. I think they did release it on Steam as well. But we never got a PlayStation 5 version. It was only on PlayStation 4. And my god people. It is fantastic. It really is. A great story. The memorable characters. The husband and wife. That are filing a divorce. The daughter does not want them to have a divorce. So she wishes that these two... 
freaking kiss and make up and go back to the way it used to be. You have a Mexican talking book that wants to see you get your freak on. Uh, that should be acted by Eddie VR <laughs> from the boys. But the um, puzzles are spot on. A lot of the characters are adorable. And especially when you're a little person that looks like someone from Big um, Little Big Planet. The um, the surroundings to different parts of the house, really, really good. I love that much. Love that very, very much. But the um, the team build, though, um, working together as co-op to try and beat the game is very good. It's a good team building game. It really is. If you're not very good at doing team building, go on this game and try it with a few friends or even try it with your family or your parents. And then you can try and work together, try and beat the game together. And not a lot of games are like that nowadays, so that's why I think this game is definitely in the gem collection. Next up, the final game choice for the PS4 before we move it on to uh, Series 2 for all the PS4 stuff. This game is a massive nod to you guys. Um, a special thank you to, the, to you all as well. Um, especially to the creators as well who made this game. But a massive salute to you guys who make games. Because this is Dreams. Now, this game is phenomenal. It, through and through, it's phenomenal. Is it a bad game? No. Is it a good game? No. Is it inventive? Yes. Now, why, you may ask? It's because this game is made by the same people who made Little Big Planet. Little Big Planet was a sandbox game. This is more than a freaking sandbox game. This is for people who want to make video games for a living. And I go on this like every night around 11 o'clock-ish trying new games that people have played and tried and made. And I go ahead and give my opinions. I give them thumbs up. I give them other stuff about it and all. It's very genius for people who want to chase their dream, which of course would be a game developer or a game maker or a game director. And they can get themselves started by making games out of this. <laughs> Mind blown, people. Mind freaking blown. It is fantastic for that game. And special thanks to the people who made it. The creators of Little Big Planet, which of course is PlayStation themselves. Sony do own Little Big Planet. They 100% made things come true for people who may not even have a chance to make games for a living. And I've seen some very, very good games being made randomly on that game. I've seen people do Resident Evil uh, games. I've seen people do memes out of it by making models. I've seen the back of me time meme on that freaking game as well. If you guys don't believe me, go and watch my live stream of me playing that game. Somebody did the Silent Hill one. I uh, saw Castlevania. Some of the Castlevania ones look amazing. Uh, Five Nights at Freddy's. There was a few of them that were like platformers, which were freaking amu um, very amusing, but very funny. And then I saw one that was um, uh, Halloween, the actual Halloween game. And oh my God, it was so freaking scary. It was brilliant. It was very well made. It made me scared and I loved it. But yeah, if you guys who play Dream and for the people who make games from the game Dreams... I give you the biggest salute of all time because it's absolutely fantastic. And that is why this game is going into the Gem Collection. So that is my five choices on the PS4, people. You have yourself Berserk, Blair Witch, Alien Isolation, It Takes Two and Dreams. There is way more than that to come, people, for the PlayStation 4, which will be in the next series of Season 2 for Game Gems. But we have got one episode left, people, for this series. And we're going to end it off with the newer generation. I've got five gems already ready to be put and immobilised in my gem collection. And that final episode is dedicated to the PlayStation 5. I'll see you guys then. The people on the sleeve will see you guys subscribing. And I'll see you guys next time. Cheerio!